Eh, <laughs> uh, this might be a little too retro. Okay, now you're just messing with me. Hello everyone and welcome to Hats Off. I'm your host and personal grilled cheese, D'Angelo Edwards. Now, in my countless numbers of years alive, I've come to realize a few truths about the world. There's no such thing as a good fandom, Fiona was always hotter as an ogre, and if a few popular people rail on a series, no matter the actual quality of the show, it will be hated without hesitation. So, today, I wanted to highlight a show that I think, while not perfect, really does not deserve the level of hate it gets. Today, I'm going to be taking my hat off to Lunatics Unleashed. How do they all unlock the doors? Lunatics Unleashed is a show that premiered in 2005 on Kids WB. It featured characters that were based off of the classic Looney Tunes. Your Bugs, Daffy, not that one, it's complicated. And when it premiered, a lot of the general consensus was No God! Now, me being a dumb, action, cartoon-obsessed kid at the time, I ate up this demo-targeted slop like a bowl of s'mores cereal. The most perfect cereal for Saturday mornings except no substitutes. Now, while I was enjoying my cartoon, there was a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that I wasn't privy to. Looking back on the production history, before the show was released, a trailer was put out that showed off some designs and the general vibe of what was to become. And looking at it now... What's up, Doc? Ooh boy, that does not look good. Now if the show had stayed like this, I wouldn't even be making this video. What we got here instead of the normal Looney Tunes were weird murder animals with character designs that could take out an eye. Like why are they smiling like that? That's not the comforting smile of a hero. You know what that smile says? A lot of people were not pleased with the look either. It even managed to get some major news coverage, with reporters asking kids if they liked it. Meanwhile, out on the playground, the idea of the rabbit redo didn't leave them laughing. What do you think, Kenny? Uh, that's an evil bug, Bunny, I think. It is. There was even a petition started by an 11-year-old named Thomas Adams to get the designs changed. So, with all this hate bombarding them, Warner Brothers took it all back to the drawing board. And we got the lunatics we know today. So, what is lunatics about? Lunatics is the story of the lunatics. A group of heroes that were granted powers when a meteor struck their hometown of Acnetropolis, sending the planet off of his axis. I don't know how that works, but it's a cartoon. Tell your brain to chill for a bit, catch up on Tangled, it's really good. So in this show, we follow Ace, the leader and descendant of Bugs Bunny, Lexi, his second in command and descendant of Lola Bunny, and surprisingly, not just the girl character, but competent in her own right. Tech, the brains of the outfit, and descendant of Wily Coyote. Slam, the muscle and descendant of Taz. Rev, the speedster and descendant of the Roadrunner. And last but not least, Danger Duck, descendant of Daffy and stuck-up wannabe hero. These guys protect Acnetropolis, a futuristic city set in the year 2772. They fight bad guys and go on adventures and it's generally a fun time. In fact, I would even go as far to call it a decent show. Not a great show, mind you, but decent. Let's go over some of the positives first, and seeing as how we just talked about it, I want to talk about the character design. I like them. I remember when I was a kid, I liked them a lot. I would always be doodling Ace in my notebook because I thought his design was cool. I like the simplicity of them, and I'm super glad that they softened them up without completely stripping them of that angular look. It helps to cement them as heroes of the future, without going too overboard. What's up, Doc? People like to call the designs edgy or dark, but to be honest, I don't see it. Just because a character wears black, it doesn't make them edgy. And I don't think Lunatic was ever trying to be a dark show. Not in the slightest. 
The vibe I always got from it was something like Sonic the Hedgehog, like something in between the Archie comics and the adventure games. Actually, I get a really B-grade platformer vibe from the whole show. You know, something like Tie the Tasmanian Tiger or Vex. Like, sure, it was taking itself a bit more seriously, but at the end of the day, it was a pretty light-hearted show. Think more so Sonic Adventure and less Shadow the Hedgehog. The only thing I would really change is, like, the size of their brows. Like, I know Looney Tunes all have, like, a really big brow, but... With these sleeker designs, I would tone it down a bit. Moving on from the character designs, let's talk about the characters themselves. Again, the characters aren't half bad. Ace does a decent job at playing the cocky, brash leader with a ton of one-liners. They don't all land, but it never gets grating. He's not a very deep character. Really, none of the lunatics are. But this show wasn't really aiming to do character studies. Surprising for shows at the time, Lexi, the only female character, is portrayed as a second-in-command. She has some stereotypically girly interests like fashion, but she holds her own in a fight, and is even shown to be one of the more competent lunatics. I like when shows do this. Instead of making girls tomboys, they just show them liking the things they like. Wherever you like football or dolls doesn't mean you're lesser or more of a girl. They don't even try and force her and Ace together. Nor is she reduced to just a sex symbol. Most most of the time. Tech is probably my favorite, since I seem to prefer the more science types in shows like this. A pretty straightforward smart guy type, but with a really cool voice. Also, slight tangent, but this show has an all-star cast of kids WB voice talent. People like Rob Paulson and Jason Marston really help to bring the characters to life. Next we have Rev, who aside from being the fastest on the team, he also serves as the secondary tech guy of the team. I find this to be a really clever way of integrating the inspiration to the show. In the old shorts, the Roadrunner was always shown to be one step ahead of the Coyote. He was shown to be as smart, if not smarter than him. So having Rev be someone who can keep up with tech, not only in speed, but smarts, is an appreciated piece of meta. Slam is pretty much just a dumb, strong one. Not much to talk about there. And Duck, much like his ancestor Daffy, is an attention-seeking glory hog. He can get a little annoying, but he also brings a lot of the humor. And supporting the lunatics, we have Zadavia, an alien who starts off as pretty much just the Charlie of the group, but later takes a more active role, proving to be a powerhouse in the field. Rounding out the cast, we have your standard villains of the week, none of which are all that interesting. But in the second season, we get a few more notable ones with recurring threats and a few based on more Looney Tunes characters. So overall, I like the characters. Again, they are nothing too special, but they are handled well enough and there's even some clever ideas thrown in there. It's not Challenge Showdown, but it works well as a lead-in show for the heavy hitters. Another thing I think the show handled well were the powers. While a lot of them were pretty obvious, like giving Rev super speed and slam tornado powers, they also put some thought into some of them. Like with Duck's powers. Aside from his energy power, dubbed Eggs, he also possesses the ability to perform a quantum quack, teleporting short distances. I always thought this was clever because it makes you think of Daffy and how he used to go crazy and start bouncing everywhere. Almost like teleporting. <laughs> You also see it in Tech's powers. He has the power of magnetism, drawing parallels between him and his ancestors' use of machines. But he also has the power of regeneration. The coyote used to get so messed up, but in the next scene he would always be fine. So giving him the power to regenerate makes perfect sense. Touches like this really show that the people making this show weren't just slapping stuff together. But not everything in this show is great, and I actually have quite a few problems with it. First off, while I like the main characters, the villains and the minor characters leave a lot to be desired. The villains are just your run-of-the-mill action villains, like less interesting than a Power Ranger monster. They really should have put more effort into them. Also, I find it weird that the lunatics are some of the only animal characters shown in the world. Like, it feels less like a fully integrated world of humans and animals, and more like Rainforest is in town. 
The animation in the first season also isn't the best. A lot of reused shots and weirdly paced animation can be seen in it. Even the backgrounds look muddy and you can see the jaggies of poorly placed PNGs. There's also a lot of CGI used in the show and it has not aged well at all. However, the animation and backgrounds do improve in Season 2. Actually, a lot of things improve in Season 2. We get more Looney Tunes based villains, the fight scenes see a major boost in quality, and even the jokes get funnier. In fact, I think if Lunatics had managed to score a third season, it could have made the leap from a decent show to a pretty good show. But sadly, after two seasons, the show was canned. It never got the best ratings and a lot of people were just writing it off as a lazy attempt to seduce the younger generation with promises of extreme characters and attractive pink bunnies. Celebrities spared no punches with Jimmy Kimmel saying Lunatics is one of the worst things I've ever seen and that Tweety Bird looks like a hooker from space. But does Lunatics Unleashed really deserve all the hate it gets? I don't think so. Lunatics is a product of its time, but thinking back to that time, it wasn't all that bad. There are always shows that become punching bags and they get put down so much that no one can give an honest look to them. The same thing happened to Teen Titans Go and people are only just now starting to come around on it. Lunatics Unleashed was just some dumb fun. Cool action and funny jokes that were pretty okay way to kill 22 minutes. And although this show is dead and buried, I hope my words can get some people to stop dancing on its grave. But if I tell you something is bad, it's garbage. Don't ever forget that. My word is f***ing law.